Simplified Chaos, episode 168. Life is beautiful and full of chaos. And it can get slightly out of hand if that shit's not tamed. We're here to share how to simplify the little things to help you lead a more intentional life. This is Simplified Chaos. Everybody, welcome to Simplify Chaos. This is Jillian, and I'm with my co-host and husband Nicholas. What's going on, folks? We hope you all are having an amazing week. We've got another great episode here for you today. We are still going against the grain, Jill, Jilly. This series is never going to end. It's man. not going to end. <laughs> no. What are we? Uh, what are we diving into today? Today we're we're chatting about shopping. Yeah. We've talked a little bit about this before, Mm. but we're going to talk about this from how we feel like we go a little bit against the grain on this subject area. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we've got a lot of great things to talk about there. But before we dive into that, as always, we love to show a little gratitude before we get started. So Jilly, what are you grateful for this week? I am grateful for my body. It is um, throwing me some curveballs. and It's a wonderland. It is a wonderland indeed. Um, there's just been a lot of things happening lately with just... Um, well, then I fractured my pinky toe, so that was like the first bada bing. Um, and I had to reschedule, and I'm going to be seeing a podiatrist because I should always get a second... <laughs> My mom, it's funny. My mom is so wise. I went to like a really fast, like med express to like get my toe x-rayed when I heard it. And I just kind of took her word for it. Like, oh, it's okay. Just, you know, walk slow. You're good. And did that. Probably walked a little. Not, you walked a little too much. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Um, And now I think it's kind of regressed some. So now I'm like, I think I need to see a podiatrist and get an actual boot to wear and i was talking to my mom about it she's like jilly you always get a second opinion (laughs) always and i'm like you're right mom you're so wise so i had a schedule to do that this week and um digestion and like things going on in my body have been shifting like all things in life we evolve we change you know Uh, nothing's linear so it's just been really communicating to me loudly and it's been a little a little frightening at some times. I'm, I'm not used to feeling that way, but it's definitely a great wake up call to make health my priority and yeah. put that at the top of my to do list and spend good money on investing in what matters most. And health is at the top of my list. So thank you to my is that body. considered shopping? It is. And I think we're going to dive into that <laughs> because I never thought about shopping for health as part of the shopping like realm, but it, it totally is. And I've had a lot of reflection since this whole, you know, fun adventure my body's going through. I'm like, am I getting close to my midlife calling? <laughs> it's shifting and evolving. And I'm no, I'm not even close to being 40, I'm like four years, four years away. <laughs> wow. That's all in perspective. <laughs> four years closer. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm just grateful for my body communicating to me, letting me know that there's something going on. You need to shift, pivot, take a, Don't take me for granted. And yeah, very grateful for it. What about you? A lot of lessons learned. Indeed, indeed. (laughs) So I am grateful for just the neighborhood pool. Like, you know, those are some, that's another thing that you can easily take for granted. And I haven't been there in a while, but I was feeling a little spunky tonight. And yeah, it's like, Lucille, let's, uh, let's head down to the pool. So we went down there and, she she started off with with floaties that she normally doesn't wear before, so she was already getting a little bold getting down there. And then about 15 minutes in or so, she saw another girl swimming. She had just gotten in the pool, and she was just like, "Well, I want to learn. I want to swim on the bottom right now." And I was like, "Well, we we need to take a couple of more steps before we can do that. You need to learn how to swim before you can go <laughs> swim down at the bottom of the pool." It's like you've been doing really great holding your breath lately. She keeps practicing in the bathtub. Like, it's it's awesome. So she's, like, really motivated by this. So I love that she puts her goggles on in the bathtub. Yeah. She's, like... Oh, my goodness. She, like She's all in it. She's, yeah. like, in the swimming zone in the bathtub. And she's, like, holding her breath for, like, 20 seconds. I know that doesn't seem like a long time, but for a toddler, that could be an eternity. Is but she any- still a toddler now that she's four? Yeah. I think you're a toddler until you're five. I gotta look this up. <laughs> you think, oh, no, I'm a child development major, man. <laughs> Come on. Ooh. But she was, like, okay... 
well, I'm going to take my floaties off. And I was like, okay, you want to learn to swim? And she's like, yeah, let's do this. So she got on the, the stairs and I was like, okay, I'm going to take a couple steps back. And she was nervous at first, but then I was like, just, you know, paddle your arms and kick your legs like you have been. And I, I kind of in the back of my mind, I expected her just to sink because we had tried this before. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. Way but to believe dad. Way. I, I was just prepared. <laughs> and she just, she started doing it. And I was like, okay, she's, she's coming at me. And I was like, let me take a step back. Let me take another step back. And she just kept on going. Now, I will say, like, the one thing, like, those the floaty that we have her, like, she was kind of more in an upright position, which is the negative thing I have to say about that. It gets kids used to being in the pool standing upright rather than in a swimming position. But, like, she was keeping herself up, and, and you know, we did it, like, six or seven times. That's the awesome. seventh time is, like, when she, she swallowed a little water. You know, it's, it's going to happen when you learn how to swim. She's getting tired. She's getting, t- Muscle getting fatigue. tired. And I think that's probably what it was, too. Yeah. Like, so... But she was super excited. It was awesome to see that. Like it was, it was just great. But then she went back to her safety thing after that, which is fine. Like it was, it was a lot of work. But yeah, it was just really awesome to to be able to be down in that pool a lot and you know kind of give her swimming lessons ourselves rather than you know going to a paying for swimming lessons. You know we we can do it ourselves. We're capable. We know how to swim. <laughs> you know it's just putting in the time and effort. So yeah, I'm just really excited that we have this opportunity to do that. Yeah. And it's cool because like the way, you know, we want to educate Lucille is definitely like at her own pace when she's ready. We want her to like be the one to communicate, like I can do this, you know, on her timeline, not on ours. And I think it's like that little scenario that happened tonight. I think it's such a great example of like positive role models Mm -hmm. make you believe anything's possible. Like seeing that little girl do it like, okay. Like, so the more you surround yourself with, with individuals of what you want to do and where you want to go. It like makes you believe like I can fucking do this, man. And, um, yeah, just hearing her initiate, like, I want to do it, dad, like our papa. And, you know, it gives me goosebumps when I hear those moments of like her initiating growth and involvement and doing something challenging. It's like, that is what it's all about. Yeah. And it's just, really cool to be able to observe it and see it in action so yeah i mean just like our homeschooling jersey a journey jersey (laughs) jersey journey we could totally make homeschooling jerseys i mean we might do that (laughs) but it's nice to be able to be the person who's teaching them how to do this or encouraging them how to guiding them yeah yeah Yeah, so that was awesome yeah so yeah we have we weren't really like doing much of the teaching it's just kind of like she's figuring it out like she knows she has to kick her feet move her arms and we're kind of you know co-piloting piloting with her so it's been yeah yeah agreed all right well it's time to dive in a little against the grain here jilly we we're gonna talk a little bit about shopping man yeah what do you mean man no you I don't. just pulled hair out and you looked at it and I, I was like, I'm man. shedding I, like, I, I shed a lot i have really thick hair nick i know okay i shed not a lot too my yeah, beard I, hair I've is noticed now... your beard hairs are like i have to vacuum the bathroom every day because of the white tile because yeah your beard hair is just shedding everywhere. I know. Or it could just be your actual hair too, because that is growing longer oh, yeah. too. But yeah. I'm like, I thought I was the one that was like shedding everywhere. I'm like, no, no these are all Nick's hairs. No, it's, it's me now. <laughs> I've joined the long hair oh, club. I'm just grateful for that cordless vacuum that just makes sweeping up everything. But yeah. Please. Um, well, but, that's a shopping thing we can talk about today yeah, too. Yeah. So um, the reason why I guess we think this is an against the green topic is because shopping when I was a kid, shopping... I think until I was probably in my 30s, I, to me, it always seemed like it was a hobby. Women women be shopping. Shopping is something you do for fun. Not a professor. You do do it frequently. Um, You do it a lot. Like, that's just me. Like, my, my hobby was going to the mall when I was a kid and just going shopping leisurely. It was like what we did when we were like... I yeah, know, twelve. I mean, that's I don't that's know. that's what we you know we went out and we hung out like at at the mall. I don't even know if that's a thing anymore or not. I don't know either. <laughs> but no, like I feel so old now. <laughs> I think we are so inundated with you know advertisements, commercials, social media that basically are brainwashing or training our brains to say you need this. It's going to make you a lot happier. You should have this. You probably have something else, but this is way better. So it's like, we're constantly getting these messages all the time on technology. And if you're watching TV that we need 
the, the latest and greatest. Like you should totally be doing this. And that's what's going to make your life full and happy. But it's really the complete opposite. And we've learned that through this journey of just like simple living, minimalism, being intentional, because we got rid of so much stuff that I bought, mostly me. I mean, I know you did too, but because it was mostly things that I went out shopping for when I would get bored or be feeling my feels and be like, let me just go to Target because it's right there and it's convenient and it's going to give me that dopamine hit or that instant like, Mm -hmm. I feel better. But then it it wears off and then you're left with things collecting dust, things weighing you down, things stealing your time, things that don't make much of a difference in your life. They literally drain the upliftment, the positivity, the happiness that I think is already there. But we think I'm going to be much fuller and fulfilled if I get this item. And it's so short-lived. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've, we've shifted to a model of where everything pretty much has to have a purpose. Obviously grocery shopping, they have a purpose nurses our body. We have to do that. Like that's something that, you know, we do every week we go to the grocery store and all that stuff. But like when it comes to just other things and, and you know, we can talk about vehicles, we can talk about clothes, we can talk about just you know, things around the house, yeah. decorations, like, you know, all of it really like, we have to have a purpose for it. Like, it's not just like, we're going to go out and buy something to buy something. It's like, Hey, what do we need? And and one of the things I can give an example of is I went into the office this past week and I just I texted Jill. I was like, I need new pants. I need new dress pants. And like, my what, did first, you poop yourself? My first reaction was like, did you shit yourself? <laughs> yeah. I was like, no, no. I mean, that would, I, that would have been a whole different story in itself. <laughs> But it is a good way to, to start that conversation about poop in your pants. It's like, yeah, I just need a new pair of pants. But no, I was just like, I haven't been in an office setting in, in a couple of years. And uh, we've been changing diets and stuff like that. So my body is not the same shape that it was three years ago or two years ago when I was in the office. And so my, my pants were just falling off of me. Even the belt loop was on the last buckle. And I was just like, oh, my goodness. Like, I feel like I'm in clown pants. It was MC Hammer circa 1995. So like... I have a purpose. Like I know that I will be going back into the office. And when we go into the office, it's still business, you know, casual attire, which totally awesome. I, you know, it's nice to dress up every now and then for work. So it's just like, okay, I have a purpose, but I'm only, I don't need to get three or four colors. I know that I only need one pair of pants. I need purposeful pants. Purposeful (laughs) pants for work. So (laughs) that's what I, you know, that's what I will do. And, you know, in this situation, I don't know my size anymore. So typically I would probably go online somewhere. And, you know, my size had been my size for probably the last six years, but now I don't know what that is. So this is a situation where I'll I'll find a place or maybe go to a couple of places and try a couple of things out and and see where where I'm at. So yeah, yeah, it's it's really like for clothes for me, like when when we're talking shopping clothes, I very rarely buy clothes. I always buy it, bought them in like in bulk, like, you know, okay, I'm buying my six t-shirts for the next five years, or I'm buying my three pairs of shorts for the next five years. And that's just the the way that I've always rolled. Um, You know, I I don't really buy sports jerseys or anything like that. I just see myself, you know, clothes that, you know, it's, it is what it is. Like, it's just never been my, my thing. No, and it definitely was my thing. And I know we've talked about shopping in previous episodes and I'll have to go back and look and maybe put some in the show notes. But over the years, I think we, I've especially felt the heavy burden and unhappiness that all of the shopping did for me in my life, especially once you, when I became a mom, you realize how valuable your time really is. And you don't want to spend any ounce of energy or your time on shit that doesn't matter. It's like, yeah, it may make my house look really pretty, but it's not really serving a purpose. I just got it because I thought it looked really cool when I was in Target that one time. And now I could really give a shit about it. So it's (laughs) we've we've kind of developed these like rules to keep ourselves in check because it can be really easily to go down that same mindset of just like I need it. I should have it. Everyone else has it or this will make my house look so much cuter or it's such a cool fad right now. So, or it's Prime Day and I just need to buy yeah, something. Or it's on sale and yeah. it's like, well, actually, you save a lot more money if you just don't buy it, you know? Right. So there's all these things that I think we've had to develop to kind of like our slogans to kind of help remind ourselves. Like to me, it's like with our clothes, it's either you use it or you lose it. Like if we're <laughs> not using it, you get rid of it. And we've gotten really good at being like, 
letting go of attachments to items and things because we see how much happier we are when we have less and we use the less so much better. And I feel like now it's like we wear our stuff to death, especially in clothes, shoes, everything is worn to death. Usually, most likely, I will have a hole in it or there'll be like Mm -hmm. our, our pit stains from sweating you know it's like or there's dust on it because you just don't wear it anymore exactly i think that and then like the one in one out rule like especially with items that we get for lucille or even us it's just you know we we've seen we've had multiples of a lot of things especially in the kitchen i think that's such an easy place where you can get two three four of something oh my goodness and think Easily. like oh i need this i have to have it i need this special tool to make these eggs that way or i need this special tool to like zest something you know it's just funny how we think we need to have this individual special tool for all of these different needs when really there may be one tool that could do all of that and it could be completely okay yeah oh and it's and it's the way that they market it it's like yeah. you can't Make this unless you have this specific item. It's so much faster and convenient yeah. if you have this tool. And it's, you know, for me, if we want to talk about kitchen tools, is like I've always wanted a cocktail sh- shaker, the shaker set and all the tools that go along with it. And I've always talked about it, but like it's never been a necessity because I have the tools available to me right now. I've got a protein shaker, which is my my shaker. And it works so good. I've got, I use either a spoon or chopsticks to stir. I have, we have the ice tray, you know, we have the big ice cubes, which is fine. That may be the only thing that we've ever really kind of purchased, but like everything, and, and we use a shot glass for my jigger. So, you know, instead of measuring with a jigger, I'm measuring because I know a shot glass is one and a half ounces and yeah, I can and eyeball I- it all. I've seen you use the bottom end of our ice cream scoop yeah. to muddle. Yeah, my muddler is the bottom end of the, the ice cream scoop. So, like, you know, there's there's tools available. We just got to, you know, start thinking, you know, outside the box just a little bit. Oh, and, it's, and yeah. you know, ultimately, I don't have to have that fancy stuff. I don't have to spend $150 on a cocktail set when I have a perfectly good protein shaker here that, that accomplishes that. No, and it makes cleaning up the kitchen so much easier and brings me so much joy because I realize like the more stuff that I have means the more I have to clean it and take care of it. Whereas right. the less things I have, it's like with Lucille, we only have one plastic plate for Lucille. Yeah. She has one Elsa plate and that's it. So it's like when people do come over with their kids, it's like we improvise. I'm like, we have bowls, you know, we we use lids sometimes from our Tupperware. Like you just get creative and you realize like I didn't have to have all of this shit for extra for when all this stuff happens and people come over. It's like, we really have enough things in the house that we can make it work. Tupperware can be kids bowls, you know, lids can be their plates. You know, we have Mason jars. We only have one plastic cup in our whole entire house. And when kids come, it's like, we use the glass Mason jars. We put those little lids on them that we Mm -hmm. use. They put straws in and it's like, they become a little sippy cup for them. It's like you figure it out and you make it work. So I I just want to emphasize like how much happier I am having less and shopping more intentionally or maybe not even shopping at all. If, you know, I feel like when in doubt, you know, think about it for a week. If you're still thinking about it after a week, maybe you might need it or maybe you might want it. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I think everyone learns their lesson somehow about their shopping habits by, you know, having to donate and get rid of things and thinking like I spent a lot of money on that. It's like, well, that was a really good lesson that I needed to learn. Absolutely. And once you get in that discipline, like impulse buys become few and far between, like you become really mindful about the things that you really are buying. And, you know, I I think we can kind of shift in the, to health here because that's been like another Mm. big thing for us on our shopping list. But like I, tonight, finally, after like a month of thinking about it, bought some, you know, barefoot shoes that that we typically get like they have these this new style which is more of a water shoe so and we go down to the river a lot and it's super rocky and rough on your feet so it was like yes it's intentional because we go down there it is a pain in the ass and so like these things are a necessity so like but i didn't just buy the i didn't say hey i need this and then and then pulled the trigger on it i was like let's think about this and if it's still a hell yeah a month from now then let's go ahead and do that and it and it was so you know, it really kind of slows everything down and those impulses start to go away after a while. So yeah, I I think there's just so many tremendous advantages of being really intentional about shopping and being 
purposeful about what it is that you're you're bringing into your household. Yeah, I think I know there's slow living. I think slow shopping should be the new fad. It's like take your time, you know, communicate with whoever your finances are involved with, like talk about it and think about your values. I always go back to your values with like, it makes everything so much easier. I think when you just align your priorities, your money, your life, your energy, your time to what's important to you and values, it's like health, adventures, travel, family, connection. And if it has to do with that, I think making it a priority is obviously really important to you. So like, it's just silly. Like I had this reflection that I was debating whether or not to like find, you know, either a functional medical practitioner or a naturopath, um, somebody who was more of an expert about gut and digestion and investing in that to like help me figure out what's going on in my body because I've been troubleshooting and experimenting and I know that I need help. Like I, I'm, I'm having issues doing it by myself and support is everything. So I finally like found this, somebody that I trust And I saw there was a program that I could do and I was just like looking at the price thinking like, and it it wasn't even like that, that expensive. It was just like, (laughs) I mean, it was like $400, but still you think about it. It seems so expensive when it comes to our health for some reason, at least this is my perspective. But if it had to do with like buying a new couch, I'd be like, totally like whatever. But it's funny. Anytime it comes to spending things on me, I think because we do also have separate insurance, which will be another topic that we're figuring out. It's like, well, I'm already paying that monthly insurance thing. Should I really be spending this other, this more extra money on my health? And the answer is always hell yes. Now I'm not like second guessing it. I'm like, if this individual, this expert, like I trust their, their judgment. I like, I want to, I think that they can empower me to learn more about my health and guide me in a way that I want to be guided versus just being told what to do or prescribe something, then I need to make it a hell yes and just like pull the trigger. So it was a great lesson for me just to, to stop questioning any investments when it comes to like taking care of my body and being empowered to know what's going on in my body, because that is going to have a ripple effect on my life. It's going to help me empower Lucille to make those decisions and not take her body for granted and not think like I shouldn't spend this money on a course on something like that has to do with my my mind or my anything that involved in this vessel that we have here on earth so I don't know it was just this great wake-up call of like why am I not as motivated to invest in my health as I am in stuff that was like Mm -hmm. a really big like have I that been that brainwashed in life that it's really easy to spend money on stuff, but it's really difficult to spend money when it comes to health and investing in our education and I don't know, in understanding more of what goes on. And I'm sorry, I'm going on a rant, no, but it's no, just, it's good. um, because it leads into something else because, because we're not spending as much money on stuff, it allows us to invest more into those things that for our health and, and, and otherwise like food and whatnot. So like, we're taking that money, which we would typically spend on stuff, and, and we're like saying, okay, hey, I am willing to invest $400, $1,000 in myself because I've saved that money, but it's that's what's important to me. That aligns with my values. And so, and because I'm not buying this stuff, I have that money to do that. So mm. that's what the, the, the great part about it is, is like what you'll find is that you'll have more money to do the things that l- align to your goals and values. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, I never thought of like shopping for health like that. When you think about it, it's like, that's exactly what I was doing. I was literally shopping for a healthcare provider or someone in the wellness industry who would help me on this journey of like figuring out what was going on. And I never thought of like health as being something that you shop for, but it should totally be something that you shop for and you Mm -hmm. take time to slowly figure out what is best for your body? Who do you want to be on that journey with you? And like, what, you know, what do you want to get out of it? Like, um, so yeah, it was just a complete mindset shift on shopping for me because I never thought about shopping for healthcare. And I know we've been talking about using different ways for like maybe changing the way we even do insurance and like, yes, because we're realizing more now that the standard Western medicine thing, it's there and it's great and I love it and um, I'm so grateful, but it doesn't align with what we kind of want to get out of healthcare. It's like we want 
someone to help guide us and empower us with information to take care of our body and find the root cause versus here's a quick fix. Here's what's going to stop it. And then not know, understand anything about what's really happening. Yeah. We want something that's truly preventative and not just sick care. Like we don't want to just go to the doctor when we're sick and then be prescribed a a medication (laughs) because we're sick. We want to tackle this before we even get to that point. We want to put good things in our body that are going to build our immune system that prevent us, you know, from having to, you know, go to the doctor. But at the same time, we know we need to go there in order to make sure that our bodies are functioning at its its highest level. So, you know, there, there's just a lot of things preventing people from, from doing that. And, and, you know, part of that is the healthcare model that we're in right now you have to pay for everything. You can't just get catastrophic care. You have to get the whole kitchen, you know, the kitchen sink and everything. You just can't pick and choose anymore like you used to. And it's just not a great system for those people who really want to take health in their own hands and, you know, do different things. Like there are so many different and creative healthcare models out there that, yeah, we would spend the extra money on it, but we're paying so much money in health insurance. It's like, you know, that's the, the dilemma. Shift, yeah. So like, this is one of the biggest shopping decisions that, that we're making right now. And, and it's, you know, there are a couple of services out there that are not insurance, but they are community based organizations that will pay medical bills for each other. It is like a, a, a community of that. And, and we're really looking into that right now as an alternative to health insurance. Um, there's some scary things out there about it. It's you have to shift your mindset from that. But like that is a, a shopping experience that, you know, where you have to just really, really put in the work and the effort, read the reviews, read articles for and against, you know, these these types of models. And, and ultimately, you know, we can try it out. And I think our last episode was all about experimentation. So I feel like we owe it to ourselves to like, we have to try it. We have to like live it, figure it out and see, because we can always go back. That's the thing. We can always go back. We can. Yep. Um, During open enrollment. (laughs) (laughs) During open enrollment. But yeah, that's, that's something that's really, we've been really shopping intentionally for. And I never thought I would ever say I'm shopping for, for health, but that's what, we've been doing this past month is just really looking at that and figuring out what really aligns to, you know, um, our beliefs when it comes to like healthcare and, you know, to each their own. But, um, I had this revelation after that, like, I think shopping is kind of, it kind of is a holistic experience. I think when you are investing your money in anything, it should be good for the whole self. Like whatever you buy takes up your time. It's going to affect your mindset. It's going to affect your health. It's going to affect, you know, your stress levels, you know, um, your body. So I feel like it makes me look at shopping as if it's a more holistic experience versus just for one purpose. It's so, um, yeah, I think it's definitely shopping is viewed totally different than it was like 10 years ago for me. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of my takeaways on everything that's been happening. It's kind of funny how it just kind of aligned like what was happening now and then the whole shopping topic i was just like man this is really interesting so we're all about timing these episodes are usually (laughs) about what's happening in our lives at any given point and this is you know what kind of surface so indeed yeah a lot of a lot of things coming up to talk about you know helps us get through these episodes all right jilly i think it's time to get into some resources for our listeners here yeah Yeah. so uh I dove back into a book that is on my shelf in my living room that I love so much. It's called Minimalism for Families by Zoe Kim. I always like going back inside here to help like reprime my mind. So anyway, I found um, a little excerpt that I thought was so aligned to this shopping topic. Let me turn here to page 13. All right. Um, And she wrote um, lessons learned with like why they chose minimalism. And I thought all of these kind of... aligned to top um, shopping. Um, Minimalism brings clarity and intentionality to the way we live our lives. Wonderful things happen as we loosen our grip on our stuff and our busyness and get free of their grip on us. One of the lessons that she learned, she says, is we ask better questions to make better decisions. Mm -hmm. Another lesson she learned was living within our means brings freedom. 
Definitely. Another lesson she learned is giving is part of living. And I think we definitely have seen that where we kind of give our presence and like a uh, connection time and actually being there physically versus presence. So, um, I don't know. I view giving in a different light as well. Yeah. There's uh, a lot, yeah. There's a lot of different ways to give. Oh, 100%. You give back time. You give back. Th- I mean, there's, yeah, you know, we've given yeah. physical things as well, yeah. like donating, like, you know, yeah. um, Another lesson she learned is there is a difference between a need and a want. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a big wake up call when we have shifted our shopping habits. (laughs) Yeah. And I think that's, that's gotten blurred so much. It's, it's, we've convinced ourselves that we need something when it's really just, we want something. Yeah. And she says, we are more inclined to examine what motivates us to see where that could lead us and decide if it's a worthwhile place to go. So really like slow shopping again, like thinking about it. Um, I have two more lessons she has. Owning less, owning less keeps things manageable. It definitely does. Hundred percent. I, I, I will stamp that. Oh my god! The <laughs> yes, just say yes. Cleaning, maintaining, all of the things around the house. So much lighter. So much less stress. I'm so much happier because of that. And the last lesson she has is we set boundaries to serve our purpose, and I think that can be applied as well to to shopping. One hundred percent. Um, make sure it serves your purpose. Make sure you're asking yourselves those questions um, to make sure it's the right fit for you. But yeah. Awesome. Good resource there, Jilly. How about that quote of the day? So the quote of the day is actually from something from her book. It would be. It would, Way way to connect the dots there. It was so simple, and it's like four words. Everything has a cost. Ooh. Even when we think it doesn't, everything has a cost. It doesn't necessarily be financial. It could be cost of energy, cost of time, cost of chaos, cost of stress, yeah. cost yeah. of anxiety. So just really thinking about that when you bring anything into your life, I think just helps, you know, really make you think more and longer about that. Nice work on the court there, Jilly. Well, thank I, you, sir. I like it. <laughs> All right. And that take action challenge. Shop slowly. Slow that shit down. Be intentional. That's right. All right, folks. Well, that is going to do it for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it. If you like this episode, can you please do us a favor and help us spread the message? You can do that by writing a review or simply by sharing this episode with a friend. And remember, sharing sparks a conversation. Conversation leads to action. And action is how we're able to live a happy and intentional as hell lifestyle. We want to thank you all for listening today. And we will see you again next week. See y'all later.